Tens of thousands marched to demand gun reform and better services for the mentally ill. We've heard a lot about the list designed to keep people with serious mental health problems from being able to buy a gun. But who is actually on that list? And why is Georgia the only state in the country taking names off of it? Investigator Rebecca Lindstrom has been working to answer those questions. There's a lot of confusion over who is on that list because every state handles it a bit differently. The federal government conducts its background checks based off what the state gives them. And in Georgia, it's a pretty narrow group of people that get reported. You can still get help. You can still go to the hospital if you think that's needed, but it's those people who somebody else has to sign them in and make them go um, who would be affected. Nicholas Cruz, the shooter in Florida, tried to get help but was never involuntarily committed. That's the trigger, and even then I'm told it's not automatic. There has to be some kind of court process that actually declares you mentally unfit. Is there any idea of the number of people we're talking about here, Rebecca? In Georgia, the GBI, which maintains the list, says it averages about 7,800 people each year, but that number has been going up. And what I found interesting is how many people on that list tried to get a gun anyway. I had to fight to get the information, but according to the FBI, from 2010 to 2015, 551 people ruled by a court as a danger to themselves or others went to a gun store and tried to buy a weapon. 551 people, the court said, absolutely would be a threat to our community, tried to get a weapon. Still, still went out to a store to try to buy one. A lot of people might assume once you're a danger, you'd always be a danger in the court's eyes. Can you get off the list? You can always petition for the court to have your name removed, but what concerns the GBI is that we are the only state in the nation that automatically removes names without getting any information on whether the person's health has actually changed. The state law right now says um, that the name should be removed. Uh, something like as soon as practicable, but in no case more than five years. So as a matter of practice, the GBI was just purging them when it hit five years. Senator Elena Parent is just one lawmaker that has a bill still up for debate in these final days of the session that would try to change that. There are people that over time might actually struggle more with a mental health issue. So getting off the list automatically, you can understand why lawmakers would look at this, but they've looked at this before. Actually, about three years ago, Senator Parent first introduced this bill. It passed out of the Senate, had no movement in the House, and so now there's a House bill that's gone over into the Senate. There's still time to try to get this passed, but it seems it's just a slow progress in order to get lawmakers to listen. All right, I know you're going to watch it closely. Thank you, Rebecca. I know there's more information also on 11alive.com.